both of you here. It's oh, great to be here. Great to be here. Does, does anybody ever introduce you as Mr. and Mrs. Crow? <laughs> has anybody ever well, done that? Sometimes. They, are, they, they see it and they don't really know Crow, Crow, so it's like Mr. and Mrs. Crow <laughs> or something. But, How know. long have you been married? Two and a half years. Two and a half years. But you've known each other for a long time and before that. Yeah. We've been actually together eight years. Eight years? Yeah. Now, the two of you must be absolutely thrilled. The, the Fast Times of Ridgemont High was a tremendous success, and uh, you wrote the book and the screenplay, mm -hmm. and uh, now you have this new movie out called Say Anything that the critics are just flipping out over. Everybody is saying, <laughs> saying this, this is going to be the hottest movie of the year. Now, wow. you, must, you must be flipping out, too. I feel great. Nat's helped out with the score and did a great job, so it's kind of like... Uh, we spearheaded our own little cinematic venture, and it's, uh -huh. it's great that people are starting to see it now. It's now, is wonderful. the film anything like uh, Fast Times at Richmond High? It's, I mean, it's humorous, and it's about younger characters kind of told from their point of view. But I think it's a, probably a little less of a romp movie and a little more of a love story. Uh -huh. We have a clip from the movie. Now, I don't know if you know what we're going to show. If, we, if you do, can you set it up? I would love to. Okay, I just, good. <laughs> watch people setting up clips, you know? Yeah, I know. And this is what it's like. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, uh, why don't you set up this clip? Uh, Thank you, Brian. <laughs> uh, which <laughs> clip is it? <laughs> I don't know. Huh. <laughs> Actually, do you know? No. Okay, well, then I'll set it up. All right. It's a good thing I saw the clip before you did. Um, actually, this is the scene where uh, and the main character, his name is Lloyd? Lloyd Doppler. Right. Yeah. Now, Lloyd has just gone out with this girl. Actually, I should, we should talk about the movie before we even do the clip because this is going to sound okay. confusing with me setting it up. Okay. Why don't you tell a little bit about the storyline and then I'll set up sure. the clip. It's, um, it's about a gifted girl who's kind of a golden girl that people keep at a distance. And uh, she decides, or actually right before she's about to leave on a scholarship to England, she meets the unlikely love of her life. Mm -hmm. And her dad is uh, surprised that she's chosen a guy like that and everyone else is. And it's, you know, it's... It's wonderful because Lloyd Dobler, a kickboxer, mm -hmm. is this guy who's just uh, made his life goal being with her. And uh, I'm sure this clip has something to do with the two of them. Yeah, this is right after their first date. Oh, great. And she feels a little bit nervous because she thinks that she blew it. Let's take a look at the clip. Great. Thanks. Uh, I'll call you later. Gives it a real 
Seattle guitar feeling, which is wonderful. And there are a lot of scenes from Seattle in the movie as well. Yeah. yeah. I want to take a look at the clip from, uh, actually, this is your video right. of the single that's out. And what's the title of the single? It's called All for Love. All for Love. Let's take a look at that.
crew from there, maybe they could write a song for us, and they actually did, and um, we weren't able to use it for contractual problems and stuff, but most importantly is I got to meet Nancy. And so, mm -hmm. Okay, and, now let's uh, hear your version of it. <laughs> it was a dirty bar. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, actually, mutual friends, right, told me that uh, they knew this guy that I should really meet. He was perfect for me. And I went, yeah, okay, tell me another story. You know? Yeah, didn't that happen to you all the time, always trying to get yeah, tips off and stuff? Yeah, quite often, because, you know, being on the road and being kind of well-known and stuff, it's hard to meet people, you know, mm -hmm. so you kind of give up after a while. You know? I mean, but you did have, like, male groupies and things like that around all the time, right? <laughs> no? Well, I would call them fans. <laughs> oh, fans, oh, yeah. okay, fans, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, just, it's different than, because, you know, like, the little male fans are so polite, and they, they send you poems and candy and flowers, and it's great. You know? uh -huh. What do you think of that? I sent her poems and flowers. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, no. So, uh, anyway, I'm sorry, so I, anyway, I interrupted uh, you. Yeah. Sorry, just, just to draw it out here. No, yeah, go ahead. Um, so, anyway, I did meet him. I of that now dunked a show called Fridays that was on for a while. Do you remember that? It was like Saturday Night Live, but it was called Fridays. Yes, I do remember that. And I Vaguely. met him. And I was like, oh, sure, I'm going to like this guy. And I saw him. And he didn't look like a rock and roll guy. He looked like a writer. Mm -hmm. And that just, I just went head over heels. You know, I just, it was so unexpected. It was like, go on, you know. Yeah, plus he's a, he's a pretty smart guy. And you skipped mm -hmm. several grades. You were, were you the nerd in, in high school? A little bit, yeah. I was. I tried to dance more. I tried. <laughs> but it's, you know, it was, it was good to skip the grades, although, you know, I've now been writing about youngsters or young adults for a while. So it's like, you know, it's time for my extended adolescence to maybe <laughs> stop. I want to write about some older characters next. And Actually, um, I heard that you have have had trouble writing about writing for women women mm -hmm. characters mm -hmm. because and when you were growing up because you were skip school and uh, right. skip grades not school um, all, <laughs> all of the women around you were much older and more mature so mm -hmm. you, you you know you had difficult now do you still have trouble you know relating with women no no not at all it's just maybe a little i should have asked nancy that question yeah, <laughs> <I> think, <you> <laughs> know. <laughs> no <laughs> it's just tough when you're like 14 and all the girls in your class are 16 or 17 because mm -hmm. it's so there's already a gulf yeah. you know if you're the same age at that time you know but just be like you want to go out with me <laughs> <laughs> no not tonight you know and it's it, but it evened out for me there <laughs> so so what do the two of you do f for fun i mean do you, do you this is probably the most time you've ever spent together right <laughs> right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's we tough. try to make it to seattle as much as we can because this is our reward system you know to be here it's like the big inspiration to be here um so we we go out and we have a farm out here and mm -hmm. we go and kind of kind of first we sleep for a week mm -hmm. <laughs> and then and we do some cooking and walk outside and do some fishing and just ride some horses and play with the dogs and get outside you, know? you raise uh, springer spaniel yeah you know that yeah, yeah. I know a lot about you. I, it's I'm Buddy, and, <laughs> Buddy and Pony and Lucy. And, and you have a donkey, too. A miniature donkey that Anne gave me for Christmas a couple years back. Oh, really? And, uh, <laughs> I brought the my donkey's name is Eeyore. Eeyore. <laughs> yeah, it's great. He knows it all. <laughs> How does he know? He knows. He knows. <laughs> so, so do you actually get out there and, and clean up the manure and oh, everything Oh, yeah, I else? shovel it, yeah. Really? I guess you can't say what it is right, yeah. right now. Who would ever uh, thought? Yeah. Yeah, I love to. I love that. I'm kind of well, kind of a farm girl at heart, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, but this this donkey that Ann gave me is a real pill. He comes in the summertime when the doors are open. He'll just come right through the house, you know. I'm going talking on the phone. <laughs> there's uh, never mind. There's just a donkey in my house right now. The donkey that thinks it's a cat, right? <laughs> so, so it's a great life when we can get to it, you know. Yeah. Well, how often do you actually get together? Now, when you're on the road, which I, you told me earlier that you, you've been writing. <laughs> Yeah, we've been songwriting. For, yeah. for eight for, months? Well, we've been off the road for eight months. We've been songwriting for the last two or three mm -hmm. um, in little, like, two-week spurts. And just, uh, it's been great. I'm getting real excited about the next album already. I'm getting ready to go back in the studio real soon. And now, because you're both so creative, I mean, do you have to be alone when you're being creative? I mean, when you go and write a song, do you head in that direction? And you go to write a movie, <laughs> you head in that direction? It's like upstairs, downstairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the way it is? Kind of, yeah. A little We're, bit. Like Hart's rehearsing in the basement, and he's typing upstairs. You know, it's like creative household, you know, yeah. but it works. You know, my, my, what I do tends to...
to take so much longer, you know? Yeah. Like, there's a scene in this movie where John Cusack holds up this ghetto blaster mm. and kind of serenades this, this girl that he loves. Right. And I was so happy when I wrote that scene, and I remember, like, running down to where they rehearsed, you know, and the band was rehearsing, and I was like, hey, Nance, you're gonna love the scene. And I realized the other day that was three hard albums ago, you know? So it's like, <laughs> it's I'm just movie. finishing what I was starting back then, you know? And they're just, they're on the road and recording, so when we get together, it's always real great, and there's a chance to work together a little bit. Is it hard for you to write, though? I mean, a lot of writers say that, you know, they have to force themselves to sit down at a typewriter. Do you have yeah. to do that, or is it something that you just love doing? Well, I've been accused of avoiding writing by writing, you know, because I'm always writing. I'm always just, like, typing away and stuff, and mm -hmm. so it's just, I love to do it, you know. And she's the same way in that she's always playing and listening to music and mm -hmm. writing, and it's great. We just try and be together as much as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> who, who are your favorite uh, people to listen to musically, both of you? Mm, Boy, you there's, know. There's some really good who like. Um, really love Peter Gabriel and... Uh, Oh, let's see, who? Anya is a, Anya. a great new yeah, artist. That you know? new mm -hmm. There's a yeah. record by a uh, woman named Nina Cherry called Buffalo Stance that's, that's out now that's truly great. It's like rap and rock together really for the first time, like in a truly great way. So, you know, there's lots of great music coming out now. And so I'm happy to say made a movie. This group Living Color is a great band out now. Yeah, mm -hmm. And they did a song for the movie, and so we were able to use that. It's a very it's hip great. soundtrack, isn't it? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's well, it tries to be realistic, you know, because a lot of times you get soundtracks to movies uh, and, and it just, <clears throat> it doesn't feel real. It just feels like... A radio cut slapped together. Or, you know, it's strange. So I always like to get music that they really would be listening to, that those characters would be listening to. Like I hung out at Dick's on Street. Yeah. There a lot, you know, <laughs> writing this movie. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, you know what real people listen to at Dick's, for example. And so mm -hmm. we got in the movie and things like that. So it's it's fun to be accurate, I guess. Now you realize, though, that there's going to be a time when you can't just go hang out at Dick's, right? And and Nancy, <laughs> you know what that's she, all about, right? She can't, but... Uh, <laughs> are, you, are, you, uh, are you nervous about that? I mean, is that something that just, you, you really don't want to have happen to you? Well, you know, I don't think it ever really will happen. I think writers are kind of anonymous people, thank goodness. Yeah, but directors know. aren't. Really? Yeah. Uh-oh. Have you talked Have you <laughs> talked to Cameron about it? I warned him. I, yeah, I tried to warn him. It's like, hold on to your anonymity while you can. Yeah. But if I go out in public with her, for example, I don't think anyone ever sees me. It's like they always <laughs> see her, and that's great, you know? <laughs> if they do, it's like, what is she doing with him? And then, it's, you know, the movie's kind of about that in a way, kind of a, a couple <laughs> that chose each other. So, um, what's, what's the story? Are, are babies in, in line here? I mean, are you guys going to have a... Is that something that we should talk about? Oh, we already have 12 kids. We just haven't told anyone yet. <laughs> Is that Don't something that you think about? Come on about? out. Yeah, come on out. Here they come. No, we're, we're definitely thinking seriously yeah. about it. Yeah, in the, in the early near future. Most happy birthday your dad. Yeah, speaking right. of kids... Um, Your whole family is up here, right? Yeah, yeah, my mom is watching right now, and my sister Lynn, and probably Anne, too. Happy birthday, adults. <laughs> my dad, happy birthday. That's great. Listen, uh, I, we're going to give away... Actually, two tickets to your opening of the movie. It's called Say Anything, and it opens up next Friday. Next Friday, and why you do the honors and just pick out one here? One? Yeah. One only? Just one, because we're going to give away two tickets. This is okay. a cheap show. Okay. I see it. <laughs>